way. And to reinstate the rule, IP tables restore, point it to the file, which is located in etc sysconfig IP tables.old. You don't have to name it IP tables.old, by the way. So now let's IP tables list again. And there's the rule. So now, what does that mean for the existing putty session? It's dead. So no matter what we type, we can't interact with it. And if we try to launch a new session to it, either via the command line, this will die momentarily. It's actually frozen. But let's try to launch a new session, and it's going to bomb because the rule has been reinstated as expected. So this will not bring up an interface, an opportunity to connect because we've reinstated the rule. So as mentioned, you can log this information by including a log target if you'd like. It's one of the supported targets, but that depends on your corporate policy, whether or not you need to log all failures of traffic. Let's just go ahead and tell this to continue the Java updater, and that'll keep running. Now we may connect to other ports on the remote system. So supposing we want to turn those off as well. Let's see if we've got a MySQL client. We don't. But what if we wanted to cut off 3306 as well, which will allow us to connect. And it reads connection to host is not allowed to connect to this MySQL server. And that MySQL is returning that, but it did actually allow us to connect. So to prevent MySQL from ever receiving those packets, just write a new rule. So that'll be IP tables append to the input chain, or if you'd like to insert it as the first rule, the rules are listed numerically or in numeric order. So we'll append to the list and the source of address. And by the way, the options that you specify here can be specified out of order. So you don't need to specify source first, for example. So you could indicate destination port, then source if you'd like. It's just a habit to specify source first. So 192.168.75.105, and we will tell it that the destination port will be 3306, and the protocol will be TCP, and the jump target will be to drop. So this will append a new rule, and let's just double check. In this case, it expects to find the protocol for first before the destination port. In this case, it matters, but generally doesn't. And now it took it. So let's IP tables list, which is logical. So here's a sec separate rule, the second rule, which will drop MySQL session. So now when we try to connect, MySQL will not get an opportunity to field those packets because the kernel has cut it off before the process has had an opportunity to field it. Whereas before, the kernel simply sent the traffic via the input chain directly to the process, MySQL, which had the opportunity to determine that we are not allowed to connect based on the users and hosts that are allowed to connect to that target. But of course, this means other hosts may connect, like the build machine, for example. So let's launch a separate window. Although this window is dead, we can bring up a new session. It's not entirely dead. It responds to local stimuli. And let's connect again. And now let's try to telnet to, or in fact, we have a MySQL client, but let's telnet anyway, to 192.168.75.21.3306. And that connects. Now, of course, MySQL doesn't see a user at 192.168.75.101 as an account, so it doesn't allow it to connect. But it did feel the connection, which means IP tables didn't intercept. Now, if you wanted to change the rule, you can replace it with a new rule, let's say blocking everyone from connecting using the replace option. So change this, which is the A to append to replace in the input chain, and change the source now, when you specify this, you should specify the new item. So, supposing we want to block all, then drop the source and protocol, TCP, so on and so forth. Now, when you replace, it makes sense to specify a rule number to replace. Otherwise, IP tables won't know which rule you have in mind. So, now notice that rule number two 
will block any source to any destination so long as the protocol is TCP and the destination port is MySQL. So this now means the Debian box will not be able to connect. So now when we try it fails, so MySQL never receives those packets. So this is a step before MySQL. The kernel is involved here, stopping the traffic from flowing via the input chain to the process MySQL. Now, how about the output chain? So supposing our policy is to prevent our server from communicating with arbitrary SMTP servers to reduce the likelihood of spam. So another option would be to restrict outbound traffic. So we'd be using the output chain. Currently, if we try to telnet to port 25 on remote systems, it'll pick up the phone. Let's see if the Debian box has a routable port 25 or NTLP or NTL grep 25, for example. Indeed it does. So that means if we nmap port 25 from this particular system of 75101, it will come back as an open port because it's listening. That'll be 75101 port 25. So it is open. So to block on the output chain, just use output. Now since our notes are on the Linux side, let's just kill this putty session for now. And we'll drop the Windows session and mark our notes from the remote system. Let's log off. And back to our notes. Write input chain rules. We also wrote another one, which was to IP tables. Replace input chain number two. Protocol TCP. Destination port 22. Drop. So usually the order doesn't matter, but in the case of protocol and destination port, the protocol must come first. So write output chain rule to restrict outbound TCP 25 which is something that is always of concern so our rule will be IP tables append to the output chain where protocol TCP and destination port 25 drop the traffic and this will apply to any source address that we come up with in the future for our server Let's go ahead and paste that in, and let's IP tables list. By default, it lists the filter table. So now the output chain contains a, a single rule. And indeed, it'll drop where appropriate. So if we now try to nmap v port 25 on Linux CBT build 1, and let's see if it knows build 1. It doesn't, so let's give it the IP 192.168.75.101. Now it won't be able to connect to port 25. It will be able to connect to port 25 on other systems, but not here. So it shows it as filter. Nmap knows, because it has or maintains the six states, it knows whether or not a port is open or closed or filtered or unfiltered or a combination of the two. So it sees that it's filtered. It knows that something is in between it and that port 25. So it believes that the port 25 may be available, it just can't get to it. So that's how you would influence that rule by placing it in the output chain, for example. Now let's take a look at our rules again. This time we'll use the V option which shows the counters. And this shows that 38 packets were received on the input chain matching this particular rule representing 6670 bytes that were dropped and for MySQL four packets were received representing 240 bytes which were dropped and for the output chain two packets representing 88 bytes were dropped let's save our config sysconfig IP tables dot old to delete a rule just use the D option so supposing we've liberated our policy and would allow TCP 25 from the outbound rule or through the outbound chain so IP tables delete from the output chain 
the lone rule, rule number one, will do the trick. IP tables list, now it's liberated. And the new end map should show port 25 is no longer filtered for 101. So this will come back momentarily. And of course the restore, you just restore. So again, there are a number of options, such as the ability to add multiple chains and a plethora of options, filtration of packets based on all sorts of characteristics. Now next, let's look at the counterpart IP6 tables.